Holy cow, did you see Malini's having a baby with Olivia? We'll get to that. There's so much going on today, like so much. But Late Night is back. Jimmy Kimmel returned to his show after taking the sun or off, and he said, I leave you people alone for two months. You start taking horseworm medicine. He tore into this whole COVID spike. He said, it was not a fun Labor Day weekend COVID-wise. The number of new cases is up more than 300% from a year ago. We still got a lot of pandemics out there. The poison control centers have seen a spike in calls from people taking livestock medicine to fight the coronavirus, but they won't take the vaccine. One of the reasons these sea biscuits are opting for ivermectin is because they don't trust Big Pharma, which is fine, I guess, except for the fact that ivermectin is made by Merck, which is the fourth largest pharmaceutical company in the world. And even Merck is telling people to cut it out. They released a statement saying ivermectin has no scientific basis for potential therapeutic effect against COVID. He pointed out if a pharmaceutical company says, please don't take the drug we're selling, you should probably listen to them. Kimmel also said poison control centers across the country have seen a spike in calls from people taking livestock medicine to fight the coronavirus, but they won't take the vaccine, which is crazy. It's like if you're a vegan and you go, nah, I don't want a hamburger. Give me that can of Alpo instead. Meanwhile, these poor horses are like, hey, I have worms. I need that stuff. There are worms in my butt. Do you understand? Colbert got in on this. He said, you probably will still get COVID, but on the bright side, you could win the Preakness. Worst of all, it tastes yucky. Luckily, the internet is loaded with advice on how to make it more palatable, including mixing it with jellies or eating it as a sandwich or throw it on your roast beef. Technically, it is horsey sauce. (laughs) In fact, it says right on the label, for a horse's ass... Great stuff from those guys. The Daily Show Twitter account tweeted, Donald Trump would have secured Kabul Airport. My dude, he didn't even secure the Capitol building when his vice president was in there. And Judah Friedlander tagged on with, you know how the USA seems to have no plan for all its problems? That's the plan. Huge news from John Mulaney. Hey, do you listen to that Daily Comedy News podcast? A couple days ago, they did an episode where the lead story was Olivia and John were cooling it off. Boy, the Daily Comedy News podcast is a piece of crap because we heard directly from John Mulaney. He went on with Seth Meyers. Mulaney shared details about his intervention, saying, I continued using drugs. You and some other friends staged an intervention, as you recall. I went to rehab again, this time for two months. I got out in February. I lived in sober living for another month and a half. When I opened the door, I knew right away it was an intervention. That's how bad of a drug problem I had, that when I opened the door and saw people, I went, this is probably an intervention. You know the gambit that I was going to dinner with a friend from college at their apartment, and you were the first person I saw as I walked through the doorway where I knew this is an intervention. So I'm going to dinner with a friend from college, going to dinner with a friend from college, going to dinner with a friend from college. What's Seth Meyers doing here? F, F. I needed to be the smartest person in the room, even at the intervention. So I remember saying to all of you, before you read your letter, I have a drug problem and I need help just to scoop you. He told Seth Meyers, sitting here tonight, I'm so grateful to you and to everyone there for saving my life. Oh, and he revealed that he's expecting a child with Olivia Munn. Fox News reports Olivia Munn showed off her growing baby bump while running errands in Los Angeles. Mulaney said, I got into this relationship that's been really beautiful with someone incredible who has dealt with the non-coked up Bambi version of me that's been very incredible. She's kind of held my hand through that hell and we are having a baby together. He shared with Seth Meyers that he first met Olivia Munn back at a wedding in 2013. I think we knew that, but Mulaney said, so it's nice something good came out of the wedding. That's just a good, clean joke all around. And Olivia got to date me right out of recovery, which is what they say, a reverse catch. It's a very, very lucky thing to have met this woman. I went to rehab in September. I got out in October. I moved out of my house from my ex-wife. I host SNL on Halloween. I relapse on drugs after the show. Not directly after, I mean, well, after the good nights. Talking to Seth Myers, you knew me before I was on a lot of drugs. You knew me while I was on drugs. You did not know me immediately after stopping drugs, so it's been a challenging time. Speaking about his new sober chapter, Mulaney said it's like newborn Bambi legs. You know how when Bambi's born, Bambi's like, hey, I used to be on cocaine. Funny stuff from John Mulaney. Wish you well. Congratulations on the baby. Also having a baby, Jimmy Carr has revealed that he has become a first-time dad, but he also shared the baby's two years old. He just never told us. Jimmy Carr said, I had to tell my little boy he's adopted. I mean, he isn't, but the look on his face, I said, no, 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 you were adopted. The new family's picking you up tomorrow. Great joke. He added, we're having a gender reveal party for our kid, but we're going to wait until he's 21 just to be sure. With some babies, he can't tell. Is it a boy or an ugly girl? From Variety, they looked back on the comedy parts of the career of Michael K. Williams. Williams passed away earlier this week. In season three of Community... 
The study group takes a class from biology professor Dr. Marshall Kane, played by Michael K. Williams. Professor Kane is an ex-con who earned his degree while in prison. Kane has seen some things, but nothing prepared him for the baffling changes in the world when he got out. Specifically, as someone who spent the majority of his life in prison, what happened with Legos? They used to be simple. Something happened out here while I was inside. Harry Potter Legos, Star Wars Legos, complicated kits, tiny little blocks. I'm not saying it's bad. I just want to know what happened. Community creator Dan Harmon took to social media and said, I don't know what to say. Sympathies to his loved ones and everybody that got to work with him. Wherever he is, I hope Legos is simple again. I hope to join him there and write more silly things for him to say. TMZ reported on the investigation into the death of Trevor Moore from the whitest kids you know. According to their report, Trevor Moore appeared to have fallen from an upstairs balcony at his home in L.A. He was found unresponsive in the backyard by the police and fire rescue crew, which arrived at his residence for a medical emergency at 2.30 a.m. on the day of his death. According to the report, so far, a probe into his death has revealed that the actor suffered head trauma when he landed after falling from the balcony. However, it is unclear if he fell accidentally or intentionally jumped. From the Daily Beast, easygoing laughs turned to nervous chuckles last week at the Comedy Cellar. That was the day of the big northeastern flood. New York City flooded. Yeah, remember that happened? The basement suddenly began to flood, cutting short surprise guest Al Franken set. But instead of hurriedly ushering out guests so they could escape the flash floods, and people died in these floods, we are not making fun of these floods. People died in these floods. Hey, it's me jumping in as I edit the show. Just want to be clear, nobody died at the Comedy Cellar. According to the Daily Beast, the Comedy Cellar made people wait in rising waters to close out their tabs. Video from that night shows people clambering onto chairs to avoid the flooding, with waitstaff stomping through ankle-high waters trying to collect payment. Daily Beast adds, the Comedy Cellar's village underground location was apparently aware that the space would possibly flood, as staffers put out a line pump during the middle of the show to divert any water that might rush in. Singer-songwriter Natalie Hart said she didn't even realize the venue had started flooding until Franken's performance was cut short. We were sitting in one of the booths that was a little above the floor, so we didn't notice. Nobody said anything for a while. Once it got pretty noticeable, the house manager flashed the light at Al Franken. He's like, oh, do I need to cut it short? And it was like, yeah, it's flooding. And Al Franken was like, oh, wait, do I really? Is it serious? And the manager was like, absolutely, everybody needs to go. We all looked down and everything happened very fast from there. Shane Gillis has a new special out on his YouTube channel. It is titled Shane Gillis Live in Austin, 48 minutes filmed at the Creek in the Cave at its new location in Austin, Texas. They left Astoria and moved south. Shane Gillis opted to bypass the traditional model for releasing specials in favor of uploading the special himself. From Yahoo, the semifinals round of America's Got Talent season 16 had a little drama. Simon Cowell was not in a good mood. Yahoo says the curmudgeon judge used his red X buzzer on not one but three contestants, and one of those contestants, comedian Kabir Singh, actually protested, demanding that the live studio audience boo Simon on the spot. The audience complied, of course, but ironically, the unscripted awkward exchange might be the only thing that could save Kabir from elimination on last night's show. I tape these in the morning. You don't think I get up at 2.30 a.m. and hit publish, do you? So who knows what happened last night? The buzzer clearly flustered Kabir when he's already struggling, and he never quite recovered. He shouted, Simon, come on, can I do one more joke? Boo this man. Even Simon admitted he was amused in the end. Simon said to Kabir, I tell you why I did that. I think you needed that. It wasn't going great. I thought by giving you a buzz, I think I made the act better, weirdly. Kabir's fellow comedian, Judge Howie Mandel, questioned Simon's supposedly altruistic motives, saying, Yeah, right, as somebody who does comedy every day, a red buzzer or a boo is a great pat in the back. Just go for it. Comedy is hard, and there's a lot of pressure tonight. You're always likable. I think it didn't go as well as you probably would have loved it to go, but that doesn't mean there aren't millions of people at home that are laughing, and they'll be the ones that have to vote. Patton Oswalt took to Instagram and said, Yo, I'm not playing those Florida and Salt Lake City shows. You know why? According to Patton Oswalt, it's because the venues were not allowing him to proceed as a vaccine only slash negative COVID test show as he had requested. Patton Oswalt said this difficult decision was made due to the rising number of COVID cases and also because I have an ego. But my ego is not big enough to think people should die to hear my stupid comedy. Patton Oswalt said he hopes to rebook the shows in the future. Man, I got a whole bunch of other things, but I got to pick up my kid. So you got to hit follow on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Come back tomorrow. Find out what all these amazing stories that I saved for like 12 minutes into the podcast. So you know they're like the best stories. And come back tomorrow and you'll find out what they are, unless I bump them to the weekend because I do like to pre-tape the weekend. All right. See you then. Got to drive.